Okay, so real quick, by a show of hands, how many folks in here work in supply chain management or work closely with your supply chain management teams? Uh, keep them up high, okay. I see maybe about 12 to 15 folks, so not a ton of people. So I will make sure I describe what I'm talking about here with supply chain risk uh, pretty clearly. But for the 12 or 15 of you, some of this will sound very familiar, I'm sure. Okay, so what is supply chain risk management? Supply chain risk management is the coordination of activities to direct and control an enterprise's end-to-end -end supply chain with regard to supply chain risk. That's how the Supply Chain Risk Leadership Council defines it. I have a little bit of a simpler definition that I use. And it's really the effort to prevent or limit the negative impact supply chain issues have on your customers. When I say customers, I'm really talking about both internal and external customers. So for GM, that would mean our manufacturing plants, our dealer network, even our internal crisis management teams. And then, of course, our end consumer, uh, all of you folks that are out there looking to buy GM vehicles. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'll walk through a little bit of GM's supply chain, give you a little bit of background on the size and scope. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the challenges we've seen with traditional crisis management. And then I'm going to talk about our journey of developing a GIS system and where we are at today and the capabilities we've gained. So as you can imagine, GM has a very large and complex supply chain. Globally, we source over 100,000 unique parts for our current vehicles, coming from over 5,500 supplier sites globally. From an indirect material standpoint, we're also sourcing software and IT, uh, including the infrastructure and manufacturing equipment that's required to produce vehicles in our plants. From a supply chain operations standpoint, we're pulling we're moving over 2 billion components a month. It's a really incredible number, and ultimately we build 10 million vehicles a year. From a logistics standpoint, we talk about shipping vehicles, 22,000 outbound shipments a day. That means these vehicles are leaving the plant, fully assembled, getting onto trucks, going to dealerships, or headed to the port for export. So as you can imagine, just managing that supply chain in a perfect world is quite a task. Now factor in the unlimited supply of risk that exists in the supply chain. So what you see on this chart is the 20, our 2017 crisis management statistics. So a few years ago, we started tracking the specific events that have impacts on our supply chain that have caused us disruptions or really caused us to change our operational plan uh, due to uh, outside external events. So we look at micro events such as factory fires, strikes, um, events that affect a single location as well as macro events. So our macro events are going to be the events like uh, natural disasters that cover whole regions or areas, uh, government and regulatory actions that will have an impact, impact on a group of suppliers instead of just one. Um, so there's really a wide variety, as you can see, of events that impact our supply chain. Just in 2017 alone, there was nearly 700 events that my team researched and looked into to decide whether or not we needed to act to mitigate risk from that event. Of those, about a third of them we did. Um, there was some sort of impact to our supply chain. Um, what, not necessarily saying it impacted our production, but to say one of our suppliers felt the impact from a factory fire, from a hurricane, from a flood, and in some fashion it did affect their operation. A lot of times we're able to mitigate that risk and we don't see the effects of that on our production, uh, which is the whole point of my team. So it's a good thing we were able to do that. Um, I guess one other thing to point out before I go on is what we learned from when we started collecting this, you can see factory fires and explosions by far the number one uh, event that had a potential impact on our supply chain. Because it is so, uh, because that type of event is no warning, right? It's always, it's always an accident, there's no warning like there is for hurricanes, you get forecasts and whatnot. But that particular event really opened our eyes and we decided, you know what, we need to do more about analytics and really understanding uh, the types of events that cause us, historically have caused us impact. And, and that tends to be uh, factory fires and explosions, followed closely by natural disasters. Okay, so clearly there's a lot to manage from a complex supply chain and from all the risks that are out there. So before we implemented our tool, we had quite a few challenges. Our traditional, uh, I'll call it crisis, man crisis management process, um, there were some uh, limitations that we had. So before we implemented a uh, GIS system, we had poor visibility of our sub-tier supply base. And when I say sub-tier, for those that uh, worked in supply chain, you probably know what that means. 
Uh, but that is any supplier that provides components for our vehicles but doesn't ship directly to us, right? So a tier one supplier would be those suppliers that ship material directly to our plants. Tier two suppliers would be their suppliers. Tier three would be the tier two suppliers and so on. So when I reference sub-tier, that's anybody that's not a tier one. We really didn't have great visibility to those guys. Our supplier footprint maps were developed on an ad hoc basis. So we could do it um, digitally, I'll say, uh, but we didn't have a system to keep real-time updates of our current supply base. We weren't able to draw data out of the system, uh, except on an ad hoc basis. The detection of supply chain disruptions. So as you saw on the previous slide, there's a ton of disruptions that are out there in our supply chain. A lot of times, before we put a system in place, we would learn about these through traditional media. Uh, we'd hear it on the news on the drive into work, or we would hear about it, you know, we'd have an online, uh, uh, the news sites online would send us alerts potentially. Um, so we integrated a real-time notification system, which I'll talk more about here in our system. Uh, in the worst case, sometimes we didn't understand or learn about a disruption until it was too late, until the shipment missed, a supplier missed their shipment in our plant, and that was the first we realized it. So that was a, definitely a limitation. Uh, manual data pulls from our MRP systems, from our material resource planning system. So whenever there was an event that impacted a supplier, we would go into the system, manually pull that supplier's list of contracted parts, and then from there we would go forward and decide which vehicles, or look up which vehicles they're on and what uh, products we need to protect. And all this work that I described above really took days or weeks for us to understand the total impact from an event. Uh, speed of discovery really influences our ability to mitigate. So when you're talking about, for example, a Cadillac Escalade, the platinum trim level has all the bells and whistles, air-conditioned seats, uh, you know, 360-degree uh, um, bird's eye camera, all these fancy parts. If the supply of one of those suppliers that provide the optional equipment that's only on the highest trim, let's say, had a fire and they couldn't provide it, and we knew about that ahead of time, we could change production schedules at our plant to only produce the lower trim levels or the mid-level trims, not that top-of-the-line option. So we would still continue to produce vehicles and it wouldn't impact our bottom line as much. Um, but if we don't find out about that until we don't have a box of parts at the plant, it's a little late to change the schedule. So it's really important, the speed of discovery of understanding when an event ha happens, and then also understanding the parts and suppliers that are potentially involved in that event. Okay, so a lot of opportunity on that last page, a lot of things we wanted to do better. So the first step in our journey to develop this GIS uh, tool was to define our goals. And really, the overriding goal is to develop a more efficient, uh, and enhance our crisis management process. I think our, our team, our crisis management team, um, they're some of the best in the business. Um, they really do have a great playbook and come up with creative solutions to get us out of jams and, and pinches when it comes to supply chain disruption. But we thought there was too much wasted manual effort. So we wanted to make that process more efficient by making data more available, having that visibility data I mentioned that was lacking, so improve our visibility, improve the speed, of discovery of events that happen, and then ultimately reduce the amount of time it took after you discover an event happened, reduce the amount of time it takes to understand how big of an impact that could potentially be. We then investigated different supply chain visibility solutions. Um, there are a lot of off-the-shelf products out there in terms of uh, solutions that will provide you with a map and you know, a database where you can store part information, but the truth is none of those really fit what we needed, and ArcGIS provided us some flexibility in development to give us what we wanted uh, specifically. And so the out-of-the-box product was, was great and had the flexibility we needed. With a couple of minor tweaks, we got to our end product. Um, collecting and organizing our supply chain data. I mentioned we want to know which parts are involved in uh, an event. We want to understand which vehicles. We want to understand which suppliers at a tier one and tier two level. So it took us a lot of time to collect all this information, pull it together, and put it into an organized database. Then we developed a tool with our Esri development team. So these guys set up, we got our project plan defined, we met on a regular basis and validated and tested out all of the uh, uh, developments as we went along to make sure it was what we wanted. And then finally, obviously we need to develop process around the tool. We had a nice shiny new tool, uh, but if we don't develop good responsibilities and process around using the tool and how we're gonna distribute this information internally, uh, it wouldn't do, it must, do, it, uh, excuse me, do us much good. Okay, so what, type, what did our product look like at the end? You'll see here our supply chain visualization application. Uh, we were able to map the geographic location and supply chain relationships of our entire known tiered supply base. We incorporated 24-7 notification process via email to alert our team of global events. 
So if you look at the, slide, uh, the picture there, screenshot on the left, you'll see uh, different colors for different tiered suppliers. We had tier one suppliers, uh, all 5,500 of them. Uh, we identified over 23,000 tier two suppliers, plotted them on the map, along with, uh, if you look to the right, along with the relationship to the tier one suppliers that they supply parts to. So we also have, aside from having 5,500 tier ones and 2,300 tier twos, oh, and all of our own plants, of course, we have 53,000 tier two to tier one relationships identified as well. And by using the trace function, which actually Kevin was demonstrating in one of their apps uh, just a minute ago, we can trace up and down the supply chain and understand the connection and flow of material between our sub-tier suppliers and our plants. Which, if, you, if, if you've worked in this space and worked with crisis, it's, it's having a tool like this where within minutes at your fingertips you can get that information, uh, it really changed the game. It really allowed us to increase the speed of understanding the effects of a global event. And then the last thing I'll point out on here is those little red circles over Japan. Those are actually um, some of the event feed information that's coming into the system. So we geolocate the event also when it happens. We partnered with another third party that brings in uh, notification information. So you'll see those all around Japan. That's seismic activity. Those are earthquakes. So I, I'll show you a little bit, another application of that here in a second. OK, so real quick here. After we implemented supply chain uh, visualization tool, what did we get? We gained real-time notification of disruptive events. We understand the event impact area instantly and visually on our application. Uh, and we're able to answer the critical questions. We're able to provide uh, information to our crisis management team, the folks that actually reach out to the suppliers, boots on the ground that go help them through these issues. We can give them all the critical information that they used to pull manually um, in a somewhat disorganized fashion. Right? That's which, which suppliers are engaged, or I'm sorry, are involved, uh, which GM plants are potential, uh, potentially at risk, which vehicle lines, which part numbers. And of course, we, we want to make it easy for them to get in touch with these suppliers, so we paired this, all of our supply chain data up with supplier contact information and made it really easy for them to reach out to the appropriate contact at each of these supplier sites. So overall, a very increased level of confidence in the data, and we got hit with fewer surprises. I'll give you an example here. Uh, Hurricane Harvey, and uh, you all probably remember this from last year, uh, we had uh, a great, this is a great example of an opportunity for us to be proactive in our mitigation. So with a hurricane, we'll have a, you know, a few days of notice before it hits. So a couple days before the hurricane hit, we got an alert, a notification. We went on and, and pulled in. You also saw you can pull in um, the latest uh, forecast for the hurricanes on the app. We use, utilize that technology as well. You can pull that in and see the uh, very specific path. So what we were able to do was identify all the suppliers in the Houston area that were in the path of this hurricane that were going to be in potential trouble. We asked them to go ahead and ship us all the material that was coming in the next few days early. So we got it all on trucks early. So just in case that we were unable to get material, it wasn't going to be an issue because we'd already have it at the plant. So we pulled ahead shipments. We asked them to do the same with their tier twos. We said, OK, hey, these tier twos are in this area. So make sure you tell them to pull ahead shipment as well. And um, through a lot of collaboration and communication, Hurricane Harvey actually had zero impact on our uh, original production plan. Not to say that we didn't um, stop production for a few days, but we were able to make up that production um, on other shifts on the weekend. So overall, our production plan was unaffected by Hurricane Harvey, which was a, a big win for our team. OK, last slide here. So what did we learn uh, by leveraging GS technology? This is what GM's capable of. We dramatically improved our visibility into our sub-tier network. We increased our detection speed and accuracy. We developed a more efficient crisis response process. And we enabled a proactive and strategic approach to supply chain risk management. So these are all things that enhance our crisis response process. And that was our main goal of developing a GIS system. But really, there's benefits beyond crisis management. Some of the things that we saw, to let you know, aside from just managing crises, is we saw significant savings in our contingent business interruption insurance. So that's CBI insurance coverage, just in case we can insure against supplier issues that cause us loss of sales. So we buy insurance against that. We saw savings because of the processes we put into place. Uh, we can do supplier footprint analysis. Our purchasing team gets to see specific commodity groups, where they're located around the globe. You can connect this data with our contract data so we have a better understanding of strategically what our footprint will look like year over year. Supplier convergence. This is when a tier two supplier or sub-tier supplier 
is supplying many of our tier ones. So it's, the supply chain converges at a lower point in the supply chain, which represents a higher level of risk. Uh, and then on top of that, there's also a ton of global risks out there. Uh, socially responsible supply chains is, is really becoming a hot topic. Um, you may be familiar with conflict minerals, um, gold, tin, tantalum, and tungsten. Uh, these are all minerals that are, there are human rights, potential human rights violations in the supply chain. Um, uh, along with cobalt is a new mineral that's coming up. We're using GIS to stay in front of these issues. We're taking a look at our supply base that exists in the Congo region in areas where human rights violations um, are potentially high. And we're leveraging all the information we have to understand if we have suppliers in that area so we can get ahead of issues before they become a reputational risk. And I'm gonna leave you guys with this. So I think that GM, we've really put ourselves at a competitive advantage by developing a supply chain risk management program and developing a GIS tool. But the truth is, I'd be happy to see every company out there develop a supply chain risk management program and start leveraging these tools and sharing them with your suppliers. And the reason I say that is because risk, the risk environment globally, one company cannot, is not going to affect as much change as a group of companies with a focused mission about reducing risk in the supply chain. So although it's a competitive advantage, we're gonna all be better off the more folks that endorse and uh, start a supply chain risk management program. Thank you. <laughs>